I'm recording. All right. Why we need Bitcoin. Bitcoin Tech Talk issue number 235. Um, if you're unfamiliar, this, <laughs> this is the show where I read through my newsletter, uh, Bitcoin Tech Talk. It is available at jimmysong.substack.com. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, it comes out every Monday at 9 a.m. Um, and I do a read through on Clubhouse every Monday. Anyway, I prepared these remarks for the Texas summit over the weekend, and I decided to publish it again in my newsletter. Um, so let me read through it. It's been said that you don't just move to Texas. Texas moves into you. I can attest to this as I am not a native Texan. Texas to me means freedom, liberty, and the right to tell others to get off my lawn. We Texans care deeply about our liberties, and as we've seen in the past year, our liberties are under threat. There are many reasons why, but, that, but the reason I want to talk about is money, specifically the monetary system that we all live under. Monetary systems all over the world are being used to oppress people. China is creating a central bank digital currency, which will allow for unprecedented levels of surveillance and control. Nigeria, Lebanon, and Turkey are all in the early stages of hyperinflation, where their governments are stealing resources from their people through money printing. Governments in places like Belarus, Myanmar, and Eritrea have financially deplatformed their opposition to prevent them from operating. These are just some examples of how governments use the monetary system as a means of control. This sort of stuff isn't just happening abroad. We've been seeing similar things in the U.S. U.S. citizens are surveilled through reporting requirements that, have, that many banks have. The Federal Reserve is expanding the money supply, increasing the M2 money supply by over 30% during the last 12 months. During the Obama administration, there was a program called Operation Choke Point, which put pressure on banks to terminate accounts of businesses they didn't like, such as gun shops and payday lenders. It's not a stretch to think that someday uh, that banks, bank accounts will start being terminated again, and not just for gun shops or payday lenders. We may soon see the banking system used to threaten businesses who are not enforcing vaccine passports or who don't have transgender bathrooms. Undoubtedly, politics is the reason for these actions, but the current monetary system is ultimately what enables this level of oppression. Control of the monetary system is a power that no one should have. The monetary system currently enables the government to violate our right, property rights and control us. This is great for those in power, but for the rest of us, our liberties are being crushed and our freedoms are being trampled upon. The central bank-backed fiat monetary system that we all live under is the problem and the reason why those in power can continue their authoritarianism. With Bitcoin, we can take this power back. Because Bitcoin does not have a central controller, each person can be their own bank. With Bitcoin, we don't have to fear the government deplatforming us from the financial system. With Bitcoin, we don't have to fear direct seizure or stealth taxation through inflation. Bitcoin secures the most fundamental human right, property rights. The case I make before you today is simple. Bitcoin is a powerful weapon to help Texans keep our financial sovereignty. Federal encroachment via monetary oppression is coming and in many ways is already here. Texas can be the first state to say no to this encroachment by adopting Bitcoin. Texas can be a leader in resisting the authoritarianism of the current monetary system. This past year has been a hard one for many, and it's time that we Texans take back our financial sovereignty and show the would-be overlords a thing or two. They will learn what we already know. You don't mess with Texas. So obviously, I prepared this for a bunch of Texans, and uh, hopefully you get the idea. It was, uh, it was a speech to get them to care about Bitcoin and our financial sovereignty because Unfortunately, our financial sovereignty is being threatened um, uh, by the authoritarians in power. Um, yeah, so that, that was the idea behind that whole speech. Um, and it was mostly to an audience of conservative and libertarian uh, Texans. So that's, that's where I came from. 
All right, let's get through some news. Uh, Bitcoin developers had an interesting way to settle the MTP versus block height debate on the speedy trial activation. They wanted to do a coin flip in a trustless way and essentially use the block cash in the future to do this. Turns out that the coin flip probably doesn't matter given that AJ Towns and Andrew Chow have merged their MTP block height approaches, meaning the coin flip won't be used. So um, it seems, uh, I, I think the general feeling around the core devs, uh, around the speedy trial activation of Taproot is that there's a lot of bike shedding going on, specifically with respect to BIP8 and BIP9. Uh, one is block height based, one is uh, median time pass based. Um, and a lot of people are getting very frustrated because it, it seems like it's um, it's continuing to be controversial where really most of the devs don't care what the activation mechanism is, uh, but it's it's sort of holding up the entire thing. Um, and I think that sense of frustration is fairly palpable at this point. Um, the If you're reading any of the emails on the mailing list, um, you know, they're, they're kind of getting snippy. A lot of people are getting frustrated and expressing their frustration. So that's where we are on Taproot. It's, it's still ongoing. There's some controversy and so on. There's a secure multi-sig setup that being bandied about on the dev mailing list. There's some controversy, particularly with respect to stateless wallets such as Trezor, as the current proposal requires some storage and the encryption part of the protocol. As multi-sig really needs better UX than what we have now, this sort of proposal needs more review and feedback. Uh, so this one is a little bit controversial. Um, Hugo Wen is the one that um, created this uh, secure multi-sig setup. Um, there's some controversy around whether to encrypt like the payloads and how to do it in, a, in the right way and so on. Um, there's some pushback because uh, you know, multi-sig currently doesn't have great UX um, and the UX improvements are, are are being pushed for by some other people. Um, so, you know, th this too is, uh, is caught up a little bit in, um, in controversy on the Bitcoin devs mailing list. Congrats to the team at mempool.space who have received the grant to continue their work from Square and Gemini. I love the site and the accurate fee estimation it gives. I hope that the Block Explorer will be more easily deployable so I can host my own. Um, if you haven't uh, played with mempool.space, it's great for figuring out what fees to include uh, for your transaction. It'll give you various bands of how expensive the transactions are currently that are in the mempool, and you can adjust yours accordingly. Um, they do have, uh, you know, deployment available for my node, BTC and Umbral and so on. Um, I don't know if their block explorer is quite ready for that, but I would love to see that. Um, I do believe you need like an elector server in order to do that. Lightning, the always informative Lightning Labs newsletter explores why Bitcoin isn't just a digital rock, among other tidbits. Lightning Bulb is a new site they launch for research questions about lightning. For academics, this is likely a gold mine for interesting lines of inquiry. There's also more ways to make money streaming data, music, and other things, which look like excellent use cases for the Lightning Network. So Lightning Bulb is, uh, is just like a collection of interesting research questions, and Lightning has no shortage of very interesting research questions as you have like various routing and encryption things that you need to make sure of uh, from an economics perspective, figuring out what's fair for, um, uh, you know, how to open channels and so on. There, there are just so many interesting research questions that they decided to make this website lightning bulb. Also, they, uh, they are exploring more stuff with streaming data, music, and other things, uh, which are part of the Lightning Network. I would love to see, for example, uh, a way to do fast block downloads um, and paying via Lightning or something like that, though you kind of need a full node for Lightning, but uh, it might be a chicken or egg problem. All right, that next story is Breeze is partnering with Voltage to provide always-on Lightning nodes for podcasters. This is a nice complement to the podcasting feature on Breeze, which is made more for listeners. 
This removes the third parties like iTunes, who take a chunk of the ad revenue and brings podcasters closer to their listeners economically. As I've said, Lightning is the decentralized web we've always wanted, and this is definitely one of the apps that will get us there. Um, if you haven't played with the Breeze podcasting app, that is really fun and uh, easy to use. And you can stream sats to the creators uh, as long as they're registered on podcasterwallet.com. Um, Voltage helps the podcaster because you need an always on lightning node in order to receive the tips basically from their listeners. And um, I think it is possible now at this point to do an ad free podcast and have your listeners directly compensate you instead of forcing them to listen to ads. So I do like this approach quite a lot. Uh, we'll see how far that goes and so on. ARK Invest has a data driven uh, has a data driven informative way to look at the Bitcoin fundamentals. They have interesting metrics like coin time destroyed, on chain profit loss, realized capitalization, and much more. The post is worth reading just to understand what the various metrics mean and using them for your own analysis for the, of the health of the Bitcoin network. So these are a lot of different uh, metrics that people use to analyze what's going on underneath um, the, uh, in the Bitcoin network at a fundamental level. Um, they're very useful for analysis and uh, all of those metrics are worth keeping an eye on. So I would recommend that. Beauty on makes the case for why the Crypto Council for Innovation is not a good thing. The council is made up of big companies in the space, such as Fidelity, Coinbase, and Square. And his argument is that the consortium will inevitably ask for some democratic process for new features and slowly take over Bitcoin's direction. I am surprised that they named themselves Crypto Council for Innovation instead of Bitcoin Council for Innovation, but I'll withhold judgment until they come out with some proposal. I will be opposing them vehemently if they do something against Bitcoin's interests. So this is essentially Beautyon's argument that the Crypto Council for Innovation could be a way for, um, you know, something like uh, the 2x agreement that happened in 2017 to happen again. Um, I, I, I'm going to withhold judgment because I, they haven't proposed anything, but... I think he's right to be at least a little bit suspicious of what they're up to. Um, they do have uh, Square on there uh, as a member of the council. I'm, I'm not so sure about Coinbase. Uh, I am more um, partial to Fidelity and Square. But that said, like you know, let's see what they propose. There's a 15% premium in Bitcoin prices in South Korea again. Last time this happened was 2017 with around the same premium. Interestingly, the kimchi premium started around May of 2017, meaning that if similar dynamics hold, we may be about seven months out from the peak. It's quite strange that this premium isn't arbitraged down, but apparently the capital controls for Korean citizens is around $10,000, making this a hard arbitrage to do without some commercial entity. So uh, there's a 15% premium, and the question for everybody is always, why, why isn't this uh, happening? Why, why isn't this being arbitraged down? Um, I, I do believe that there are some capital controls that make this very difficult. There are people making millions of dollars on this arbitrage by going back and forth and using some commercial entities back in 2017. Um, I, I believe a lot of those loopholes have been maybe cut down and so on, so that may be a part of it as well. Signal is launching a token. Stefan Deal is not happy about it, as are many others. They've been a privacy messaging app of choice for many people over the years, but this move indicates that they're having a tough time monetizing. That they chose to have a closed source token indicates that it's going to be highly centralized. I suspect this will cause a lot more people to check out projects like Sphinx for messaging, which in turn cause even more growth of the Lightning Network. I do like Sphinx, um, and I, I think it's a superior alternative to Signal at this point. Signal seems to be going down the altcoin route, um, and that's very sad because it was a very secure messaging app 
Uh, but if they're having trouble monetizing, they're having trouble monetizing. It's kind of sad that they're going in this direction. Peter Thiel has stated that he thinks Bitcoin might be a financial weapon against the U.S. by China. If so, it would only behoove the U.S. to accumulate Bitcoin, which might be the entire point of the statement. In other words, Peter Thiel might be playing 4D chess. <laughs> if Bitcoin is the weapon, then um, then the U.S. government should adopt it more, uh, not less. Um uh, Chips continue to be in high demand as TSMC cancels some price cuts. This is one of many industries where prices continue to go higher, like lumber, aluminum, copper, and plastics. Not only does this mean that mining equipment is likely to have some, uh, is likely going to have some delays, but it also means that price increases in almost everything are going to hit like a tidal wave over the next 12 months. Something that I've been saying for a while is that um, you know, the shortages and price increases and the raw materials happen first and then percolate down um, through the entire supply chain. Um, I do believe that it's it's going to show up in consumer goods. It, it, it has to some degree in a lot of consumer goods. Um, anything that requires a chip is uh, it's hard to find and getting more expensive by the day um, because of TSMC. Uh, but lots of other things will, too. Another week, another DeFi contract gets hacked. This one was particularly egregious because it was something called Forstyle, and it happened hours after launch. <laughs> good, good job, guys. Um, I am going to be at the Texas A&M Bitcoin conference this weekend. Uh, this will be my first in-person conference since BitBlock boom last summer. I'm also going to be at Bitcoin 2021, June 4th and 5th. I am starting up my programming blockchain seminar again, um, June 1st and 2nd in Miami and August 10th and 11th in Mexico. And it's a two day seminar for programmers to learn about Bitcoin. You can apply uh, to get into this workshop. And I also have some scholarships available and you can apply for the scholarship as well. I do have a Sphinx group for my podcast and newsletter. And on this week's Bitcoin Fixes This, I talked to Tone Vase about risk management. I also read through last week's newsletter on Clubhouse and I recorded it. So you can also get that from the Bitcoin Fixes This podcast. Um, Michael Saylor and I were on the Bitcoin for Everybody series with Stefan Levera um, this past week. And of course, I have my three books. Thank God for Bitcoin, the little Bitcoin book and programming bitcoin so that does it for uh for all of the stories this week uh if you have any questions not comments questions about this please raise your hand i will bring up a couple of people and go from there abdullah i am good Yeah. All right. Thanks, Abdullah. I'm going to move you to the audience, but uh, you must uh, you must not have uh, listened to anything that I've written or spoken about in the past like five years. I am not a fan of altcoins, especially DeFi. I do think that Bitcoin is a very good store of value. I do think that it'll go above 60,000. Um, you know, like uh, it, it's easy to sort of just take a profit and uh and see it as a trading thing, uh, I would encourage you instead to really learn what it is uh, and understand what Bitcoin actually is, because ultimately that's what will get you to hold on to Bitcoin instead of selling it when you've doubled your money or something like that. Uh, the Bitcoin Standard is a very good book for that. Um, I've written three books, depending on your level of technical expertise and religious convictions, um, you know, you, you might want to read some of those. Um, so that's what I would say. Um, all right, let's see. There's uh, no more. Well, all right. 
yeah, there's no more questions, so I will end this right now. But uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, until next time, fiat delenda est.